Welcome to Excel 2010 Custom Formatting. I'm Trainer Lori. What is custom formatting? Uh, let's say that there's some formatting that you want that isn't on the ribbon or you need to use two or three of the tools on the ribbon to get the formatting that you want. Why not just create your own custom formatting? And that's what it's for. You'll find it in three different places. You can either go to Home Format and Format Cells or on the dialog uh, box launcher under number on the home tab but my favorite way is just to hit control one and when you do that it opens up the format cells dialog box under number we have lots of different ways to format but there's one called custom and in custom you can write your own code if you see a code that you like and you're going to learn what all these mean by the end of this lesson then you simply choose it and it will put it up into the type area and you can change it in there so you can start with one and then make some changes to it and at the top you'll see what it will actually look like once uh, you've formatted your, your text also if you have one in there for example I created one I don't really want it anymore then you simply hit the delete button Placeholders means zero and pound sign or hashtag and that means that they're going to hold a place just in case. The difference is, is zero is an insignificant placeholder. In other words, it will show zeros even if it doesn't need to be there. For example, here it doesn't need to be there. That zero does not need to be there. Um, however, it will show it anyway. In uh, the second, with the hashtag, it will only show it if it does need to be there. And because we don't need a zero after the, the three, after the dot, then it will not show. Now let's look at some other common codes. Anything in quotation marks will show. So for example, if I want um, an area code to show, uh, then that will show up regardless. So I can just put in the last seven digits and the first three digits of the area code will automatically show. The comma means thousand separator and so that will automatically separate our thousands. If I put in a percentage or any of these other symbols it will create, uh, it will show. So you can see the percentage will show here or if I put in a, a space so I, I, sh I wanted to show a space etc. And then the decimal point. If there is a space or a, a separator of a semicolon between two sets, that means the one on the left is for positive numbers and the one on the right is for negative numbers. So if we have the semicolon, that means that there are two options. And if there's only one option, then it will show the same for both positive and negative. But in this case, I have uh, one for positive and one for negative here. Once we've got positive and negative, we might want to put some other codes in there. For example, maybe I want my negative to show, instead of with parentheses, I want it to show red, or I want it to show it both with red and parentheses. And so we do have that option. Uh, first, let's look at the underscore. You can see the underscore will actually insert a space like an indent would. Now, I like having that space there because it's not up against the wall of the cell. So um, just simply putting in the underscore will create that, that dent uh, or indent for you. Color, if you want the color like the red, then you simply write it in square brackets. Now, there are only certain colors you can specify. And so these are the colors that you can use. Cyan, uh, green, magenta, red, white, and yellow. And then if you use a star that says whatever's following the star, fill in the space with it. And that space between where the, uh, the dollar sign is and where the number starts. So in this case, we want to fill it in with spaces. But you could fill it in with uh, asterisks or um, X's or anything else that you'd like to fill it in with. Just put it after the star. I mentioned that there are two if there is one semicolon, but what if you have three semicolons or two semicolons? Well, remember, the first one is always positive or all. In fact, uh, if you only have one section, then it's going to be positive, negative, zero, and text. If you have two sections, then it will be our negative values. Now the third section, after the second semicolon, this is what it would look like if you have zeros. So it'll show it zeros. In this case, the zero is going to be a dash. And finally, the last one is what would text look like. And this code means it is going to be text. So you can see that it's going to show different styles based on whether it's positive, negative, zero, or text. If, for example, you want each thing to be a different color, in this case, our positive numbers are green, our negative numbers are red, 
our general numbers, our, uh, our zeros are black, and our text is blue. Now let's look at date formats. I know dates cause a lot of people problems, and they have specific things they want it to look like. Well, for example, I put in a regular date here with a 1D, 1M, 1D, and 4 Ys, and you can see that that is the general. That's, that's what you get if you don't do anything. However, if I only want a two-letter abbreviation, then I will get that. So if it's 12 or if it's 8, I will still have two letters because they are, it will show the insignificant zeros. Three M's means three-letter abbreviation, and you can see the dash there. Four means spell it out. And look at five, you'll only get this with M's, and that is that you will get uh, the first letter. Uh, so if you've tried to use the left uh, function to get the first letter of the month here, and it didn't work, well, this will work. Now what if you just want the year? You can just put in what? I want you to think for a minute. I hope you said four Y's, yes. And then uh, if you have D, that means day. So that would look like this. And three D's would look like the day uh, abbreviated. And then finally four D's would be uh, the day spelled out. Time formats, I know these are a little frustrating for people as well, but H obviously means hour, and MM, not just one M, because that could be month, but MM means minute, and they always work in conjunction with each other. And you can see 430, you can see 430 with seconds, the SS is seconds, and then you can have it with AM or PM. Now what if you put in military time, or the 24-hour clock? which is um, very popular around the world. And then all I have to do is put in four digits and it will automatically change it to the 12 hour clock. Now, when you have the H in brackets, like the square brackets, that shows hours elapsed. I know this, this can be very frustrating if you're trying to um, subtract two times to get an elapsed time. It just shows you hours and minutes, but it doesn't show you how many hours and minutes have changed. So you just simply put the H in brackets and it will show you the hours elapsed. And then two of my favorite keyboard shortcuts, and look for my keyboard shortcuts in Excel training if you haven't seen it already. Control semicolon puts in today's date automatically, and control uh, colon, which just adds the shift to it, puts in the, uh, uh, the time. What if you have big numbers? You have everything in thousands, and you don't really want to see all those zeros? Then your custom format, you simply show two zeros and then the comma that shows I don't want any more insignificant zeros after that. Or if I'd rather have the K in there so I can know for sure that it is a thousand, K meaning thousand, then um, I can do it that way. Notice they're in quotes, and that means uh, to show it, remember? You can do the same thing with millions using two commas. And then, of course, the M for million. And sometimes we actually want to hide a number. I don't want people to see it. So I type in a number. could be a salary or a, a, a credit card number, something like that. And I, I want it. I know what's in there, but I've got to share it with somebody, and I don't want them to see it real quick. So instead of trying to hide the columns and everything, you can simply hide the numbers using a custom format of two semicolons. Uh, the problem with that is you will still see the numbers up on the formula bar. So that means you have to hide the formula bar as well. And to do that, you go into View, Formula Bar. And when you uncheck, the formula bar goes away. People will be able to see it again simply by clicking View Formula Bar. So you have to know the level of expertise of your users. Uh, if they will be able to figure this out, then you'll have to go in and protect it. And that's another training you'll want to look at. That's all for this time. Thank you for joining us, and if you like it, please click like, and if you have some requests, feel free to email me at trainerlaurie at live.com. Thank you.